What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Your boy is back with the NFL Fourth and Gold podcast. This is our Week 12 prediction slash recap of Week 11. And gentlemen, right before we even get into our predictions, uh, let's go ahead and discuss um, the top three um, things from the NFL this week. Uh, first off, being the uh, the Steelers versus Cleveland Browns brawl. Now, I talked about this in a separate video, but I want to know who you guys think was in the wrong and were these the suspensions and the punishments that got handed out just. Uh, Flip, what do you think? Um, I think the suspensions are perfectly fine. Um, uh. I think, uh, uh, what's his name, Miles Garrett swinging the helmet at Mason Rudolph was a terrible idea. Yeah. And I think that the NFL deciding to let Mason Rudolph ruin the Steelers season was the perfect idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, so <laughs> I think the suspensions are perfectly uh, laid up because yeah. uh, both sides lost in this debate. Yeah. Someone was, somebody said even when the Browns win, they lose. And I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Uh, but, um, Waz, what is your thoughts on the whole brawl? And, like, you know, as far as whose fault it was, like, who did, did you, uh, like, who was in the wrong? Do you think that one one person was more in the wrong than the other one? Well, yeah, of course. Well, I mean, Tom Garrett definitely, obviously, uh, should not have, you know, he was his helmet as a weapon right. uh, to someone that are using and uh, the other guy's helmet as a weapon. Um, and it hits somebody in the head. That's, that's indefensible. Um, yeah. He definitely deserves uh, the year long suspension and then obviously potential for that to carry over into uh, next season. Right. I'm, surpri- I'm just surprised that uh, Mason Rudolph obviously uh, didn't get any sort of any sort of uh, suspension at all. Cause yeah. He definitely obviously initiated it. He, he, he got a $35,000 fine, though. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, okay, I, I'm I, I'm just surprised didn't get any sort of like uh, you know maybe a game. I don't. I, I mean, I, I'm not sure. I guess what happened. I guess if, if Miles Garrett didn't actually swing uh, swing the helmet, if it just turned into a kind of a a scrum where guys are pushing and shoving and trying to kind of get at each other, mm-hmm. uh, maybe he would have gotten a suspension. But I think that the fact that Miles Garrett literally take this such a such a kind of heinous act of just swinging the helmet. Yeah. It completely it completely negated anything that made the Rudolph with up. Made the Rudolph to sort of spit in his face and and it would have been completely forgotten and, and completely swept under the rug because I mean once the other guy throws a swing a helmet at your you know head to yeah. and uh hits you yeah, all bets are off. Like, Mason Rudolph could have done anything. He could have, he could have you know, said it, said a slur. He could have just, again, said it the face. Uh, he did obviously kick him in the, you know, crotch. Yeah. And try to pull, he tried to pull his helmet off when um, mm-hmm. he started the yeah. fight. But nothing, nothing, that kind of got swept under the rug and overlooked. Um, you know, with that fine. So, um, but yeah, no, that was, I was surprised to see uh, Pouncey get a suspension. Oh, um, yeah. I think he was just, I think you're just defending. He's defending a quarterback. Yeah. I think. Uh, <laughs> what do you think, bro? Now, uh, I, would, I would agree with you, mm-hmm. except he started stomping on the <laughs> Yeah, he started grounding and pounding. I mean, that was great. All right, but guys, this is what I think about this. Now, are we even having like, are we even having this conversation if it wasn't for Miles Garrett's late hit? I mean, because because come on, there's less than ten seconds left in the game. Why would you want to drive the quarterback down? You're up by, you're up by 14 with eight seconds left. Why are you trying to drive the quarterback down into the ground? Now, I mean, look, if you try to drive the quarterback down the ground and you, you get the penalty, you don't have your quarterback react by trying to gain the other dude's penalty. But see, here's the thing. And then, but Flip, here's the thing about that. Now, some people say that Miles Garrett, like they say that um, Mason Rudolph tried to. Ki- I- I've watched this video at least three dozen times by now, just to see all. I'm just see if I leave any details out. Now, they said. Now, from what I saw, they said that Mason Rudolph tried to kick uh, Miles Garrett in the groin. Now, whether or not it was intentional, you are taking it to an entirely different level when you rip someone's helmet off of their head, which could have broke his neck, neck by the way, and then you swing his. You, then you try to swing it. Okay, like you, like you're, you're taking it to a whole. If kicking somebody in the groin, that's one thing. I mean, because come on, as a man, if, if you get kicked in the groin by another man, you're gonna react. But you're taking it to a whole different level when you try to crack somebody's skull open. You know what that's like? I'll give you an example. That's like if 
Y'all, this is like if one of you step on my shoes and then I try to pull a knife or a gun out of you. That's taking it to a whole different level. Now, as far as the suspensions go, I, I mean, the $35,000 fine or whatever. I heard that both teams got fined like $250,000 total, which I guess is just. But see, here's the thing. I mean, yeah, but see, here's the thing. Like, as far as the suspensions, like, I feel like the Miles Garrett should get 10 games. I feel like he should get suspended for the rest of this season and for the first four games ne- next season. Uh, Oak and Joey. Yeah, just give him, like, six. No, 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 uh-uh, no, no. Ten games is just. He should have got ten no, games. Six games is fine. He didn't, he didn't crack his ball. But, I mean, but come on now, Flip. Yeah. Come on. Look, man, swinging the helmet is one thing. He didn't land it. <laughs> so he was, but the thing is, do, do you know why? That was from the grace of God. He was lucky that he did get hit with the open side of the helmet. If it was with the crown of the helmet, he'd have been knocked out. He would have. So to me, a 10 game suspension is just. And if you ask me about Marquise Pouncey, I don't even think Marquise Pouncey should have even got more than one game. Okay, mate. All right. A one game suspension and a $50,000 fine. That would have been perfect. Not no three game suspension. Uh, I would say three games right no, Flip. Come on, Flip. Okay, it's one thing to push somebody, but then... Like, Ground and pound. ...start stomping on their head. That was me. That was the one thing. Don't stomp on his head. I mean, <laughs> like I said, you know, you you had somebody try to split your quarterback skull open. How are you supposed to react? He did He. I mean, because everybody said, oh, my God, he was in the wrong. Come on. I would have done the same thing. I don't give a damn about no suspension, especially if you try to murder my quarterback. No. If you want to get murdered by a giant 280 pound defensive lineman with a helmet, yes, Miles. The thing is, look at the size difference. Miles Garrett is a six foot five, 270 pound D lineman, D- defensive end. Mason Rudolph, six three, six four, two thirty. You outweigh you this man. What, what we're going? You know what Mason Rudolph should have learned? What? He should have learned that he should have watched more tape, especially of a certain game. Uh, by the, the Falcons and the Rams, where a little thing that happened between Devontae Freeman and yeah. Aaron Donald happened. Oh, yeah, he, he, he picked the dude up. Like, hey, he picked him up by his head. Yeah. provoking these people. Yeah. And like I said, uh, what's called it? Uh, Aaron Donald is about 6'5, 290, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's a big man. Yeah. <laughs> these mm-hmm. D linemen don't, they don't fuck around. No, they don't. Mm-hmm. Mason Rudolph should have took the sack. He should have been like, damn, that, that was trash. We get the penalty low and keep it going. I mean, but come damn, on. Like I said, this man just got his brain scrambled by freaking um, uh, Earl Thomas the third a few weeks ago. So. Yeah, he should have learned his lesson from there. <laughs> I mean, it's it, like it's messed up because he's my quarterback. Well, he's the Steelers quarterback right now. But I mean, me personally, just 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 a little side thing, right quick, because I'm in the Steelers group, and a couple of the, my fan, Steelers fans are watching this. I said, you know, whether or not you agree with uh, Mason Rudolph being benched or suspended for his actions or for what has, for what transpired, I said, if you ain't gonna bench him for for the fight, you should at least bench him for his performance because his performance was trash. I mean, come on. We we got bailed out by a forty yard penalty, and um, yeah, we, we got bailed out by a forty yard penalty. We scored a touchdown because of that. And he come on, he threw four picks. But I'm gonna tell you right now in this AFC in this AFC North division, we're not gonna catch Baltimore. I mean, by the I mean the thing is, if we the only way we can catch Baltimore is if Baltimore loses out, fat chance, and the Steelers win out, fatter chance. But hopefully, like I said, we got the Bengals away next week or this upcoming week, and I think that the Bengals are going to take a page out of the Browns' book. Their goal isn't going to be to win. Their goal is going to be as to murder as many Steelers players as possible. Because, <laughs> come on, James Conner is out. Juju Smith-Schuster is out. Deontay Johnson is out. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. But, I mean, like I said, as far as who I thought was in the room, I thought that, like I said, I mean – yeah, you go ahead and say that uh, Mason Rudolph does deserve some of the blame. Like I said, I feel like a $50,000 fine should have been all right for him. Like I said, I don't feel like that, um, what you call it, I don't, I don't feel like Pouncey, he should have got even, he, a one-game suspension and a $50,000 fine should be hit for him. And Okunjobi, that could have been avoided. I feel like he should have just got probably about a $50,000 fine. But, I mean, I feel like a 10-game suspension is all right for um, for Miles Garrett. But, yeah, anyway. 
But all right. Now, the whole Colin Kaepernick situation. Now, Colin Kaepernick, I mean, like, you know, he um he staged, well, not staged, but he um he called for it to be an open practice for teams to watch him practice. Um out of the 32 teams, I heard only 27 showed up, which is pretty damn good. And, and people were like, well, it's kind of too late for him to be picked up by a team now. But thing is, with this season and the way the quarterbacks have been dropping like been dropping like flies, it ain't never too late to, for you to pick up a quarterback. I mean, it really is not. And there's probably like a good five or six teams that are interested and need him now. But, they, but I bet you those five or six teams that need him are like, hmm, do we pick up Kaepernick now or do we just go ahead and just play out the rest of this year and try to pick up a good quarterback in the draft? But, I mean, now – a lot of people are like, well, Colin Kaepernick, he's been on the bench. He's been, he's been pretty much sitting in the freezer for like three years. So it's like, well, why not? The thing is, like, why? Like, because a lot of quarterbacks, they try to get out of the league by the time they're 35. It's like, why the hell would you want to risk your body? I mean, because think about it. If you're playing football, little like middle school league football, that's three years. Playing high school football, that's four years. College football, that's another four years. Pros, that's uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 years, depending on how good you are. So you're talking about putting 20 plus years of football stress on your body. You don't want that. But I mean, I guess, and everybody's like, well, why don't Colin Kaepernick, if, if he really does, I feel like, you know, money's not even the thing, Colin Kaepernick. I feel like that he just wants to play football just because he loves the game. And it's like, well, if he just loves the game, then why don't he just go to another league? Why don't he go to the, the CFL or the XFL? I guess it's because he's trying to kind of, he's kind of trying to prove a point here. <clears throat> because there's been people who've done worse things than Colin Kaepernick. Then, you know, there's been people who have, you know, child abusers, sex offenders, murderers, drug users, animal abusers, all them, look at that. All of them did something wrong, and yet they still got a second chance to play in the NFL. So you mean to tell me that Colin Kaepernick takes a knee and he can't get back in the NFL? Like, th there's something wrong with that. But Flip, what do you think about his open practice? Um, I didn't like uh, the, the thing about very different sources saying that uh, the NFL offered him some kind of like weird uh, stipulations in the, the agreement like mm -hmm. two hours before the actual workout. Yeah. Uh, he had to, you know, well, basically, Captain was just like, fuck it, you can have my own workout because you guys are doing shit, shit, which seemed very likely because, I mean, this is out of the door. Like, come on now. Like, nobody was, like, thinking to himself, oh, man, the NFL should give Kaepernick a, a random workout. Yeah. <laughs> that was just so random. And then uh, all the details that started coming out it just made it seem so fishy about what the NFL was trying to do, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the workout taping. Um, so I'm glad that he held his own practice and <clears throat> like, six or seven teams showed up. I'm not sure that a, a team is going to pick him up. Yeah. Like, At this point, I would. Like I said, I'll just wait to the draft and wait to the next season to see. But if I was a team that was trying to be bold, I would pick him up for sure. Especially from the Bears or somebody. Yeah. Like, <laughs> because, like I said, you, we, don't know what's going, we don't know what's going on with Cam Newton. We don't know if he's going to come back to the Carolina Panthers or not. Like I said, you know, there's teams who are tanking, who need a quarterback. So it's like, well, you kind of put yourself in a precarious position right there. But go on. And, and plus, at this point, uh, I think a lot of people are just over it. Uh, it's been, what, three years since uh, the whole kneeling situation? Yeah. Uh, a lot of these fans that were crying that, oh, man, he's disrespecting his flag. They don't care anymore. Yeah. yeah they don't, they don't just sweep them under the rug. I mean, look at, uh, like, a Kareem Hunt situation. The man that was on tape uh, kicking a woman kicking away, yeah. throwing her around and everything, and people were just like, oh, okay, cool. We forgot about that after one season. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, what are your thoughts on the open practice of Kaepernick Hill?
they are trying to give this guy every full opportunity when, when clearly, I mean, they they gave Cabernet, I think, well, I want to say, it, like I said, like when they offered Cabernet, they, they gave him a very limited amount of time to accept the offer to have the tryout. Mm -hmm. And then it was like a, it was like a situation where you have the tryout on, <clears throat> on a Saturday um, when you have very limited opportunity for, um, you know, a lot of NFL personnel to, to be present because of all the games that occur on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, so you're, you you limit the amount of, of good eyes that would actually be at the actual uh, workout. And, um, God, you, you gave them such a short amount of time to kind of, okay, be ready, and then you you, you don't advocate for, for, for cameras to kind of be there and for it to be open to all media, essentially, mm -hmm. uh, just to have it very, very be transparent. Um, which it just seems a little bit shady. It seems like the NFL was really trying to control the whole situation, and I, I do applaud Kaepernick for not uh, yeah. sliding into it mm -hmm. and then doing his own thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, it, there's just so many. There's just, you know, there's. there's but Kaepernick many. has options, but you're right. Ka Kaepernick has options. He has other places that he can go. I mean, and there's just, there's just so, there's a definitely a, a fairly good amount of teams right now that definitely have him on their roster mm -hmm. and back up. I mean, I mean, if you look at gosh, you can look at who the Lions are starting right now in place of, yeah. you know, places after. I mean, you can look at that Pittsburgh Cincinnati matchup. Like, you could argue, like, I mean, either the starting quarterbacks in there, are they that much better than Kaepernick? I mean, what have you seen from Kaepernick in his last season of Playing. Yeah, it's still better than yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just there's just you can go down this entire schedule and you know there's at least you know six there's like at least six to eight teams that you know are putting out a quarterback right now that just that definitely you know was not playing as well as Kaepernick did his last season with the San Francisco 49ers in 2016. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just it's just a very very messy situation. Um, and like you said, you know, we've had, we've had so many different other types of players with much more egregious acts, you know, whether it was, you know, domestic violence, uh, uh, drug abuse, all kinds of, yeah. all kinds of, yeah, of drugs and all kinds of different things, um, laws being broken. And broken Even with the Antonio Brown drama, Antonio Brown caused more drama than Colin Kaepernick ever has. But yeah, I mean, still, I mean, I, I understand, but that's kind of irrelevant, though, Flip. I mean, Antonio Brown has caused more drama in one month. Than Ka Antonio Brown caused more drama in a month than Kaepernick has in three years. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It, it, that's what I mean. it, it, uh, Here's the thing. Drama in terms of, like, locker room disruption, possibly. Um, uh, but Antonio Brown was, like, a shining star in terms of the amount of attention in media. And and, the, and it, granted, the stories got crazier and crazier, and it was uh, it was a hell of a circus. Mm -hmm. But that came in, that came and went. So even though Antonio Brown, so as Antonio Brown is not on the roster right now, no one's really talking about it. Yeah. But Kaepernick hasn't been on the roster for three years, and he's still he is still uh, remaining a topic of discussion. And I wanted to point out, you know. The reason why other players are able to get second chances and Kaepernick isn't because Kaepernick, while his while his position and his and his uh, stance on kneeling wasn't breaking really any laws, yeah. his freedom of speech, it was <clears throat> certainly certainly costing. Uh, it was certainly uh, potentially uh, affecting the owners and costing them money, at least in terms of what they're seeing and, and the and the potential outrage from certain demographic in the NFL fan base, it was certainly uh, a potential threat to their wallet. Yeah. So you could say, you know, Kareem Hunt kicking a woman on camera, you could say that is a, uh, infinitely a much more harsher and, and terrible act compared to what Kaepernick was doing. But that's not going to affect the bottom line, like what Kaepernick, you know, uh, in terms of what Kaepernick did. That's, kind of, that's ultimately what it's all about. That's ultimately why the uh, the why Kaepernick continues to get blackballed is because it's the potential backlash of threat to the owner's wallet.
Yeah. I think at this point, the owners can make that money back by making him the, the quarterback. Owner. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it, it's going to attract, like, the thing is, if it's the only thing the NFL owners love is money and attracting attention. <clears throat> they don't care even if it is negative. Yeah. Go get attention, but it, it's the issue. Because look at the Pittsburgh Steelers. We gave Michael Vick a second chance after that dog fighting incident. Yeah. Well, you were direct. It's the Eagles. Well, the Eagles the picked Eagles him up before. Did yeah. Eagles did first. Yeah, the Eagles did it first, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And he actually had a very successful career with the Eagles. Very successful. Until the Eagles dropped him and then we picked him up. Exactly. Exactly. Because every thank you. Everybody loves a winner. Because if he takes a losing team and gives them a positive record, it's not even going to matter what the hell he does outside of football, whether it's taking a knee or whatever the hell else. If he starts breaking in them W's, they start raking in money. You start raking in money, you start making the owners happy. So I don't really think it's going to matter. I mean, the thing is, people want to win. And people, the thing is, people want to see their team win. So it's like, well, if we can get this guy on our team and then we start winning, all those could be quote unquote forgiven. Like I said, even though Kaepernick didn't do anything wrong in the first damn place, but yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, you got opposing fan bases with that. We can, that's a whole different video there's, topic. There's one issue with this though. What's that? That would all be fine and dandy if Cap agrees not to kneel anymore. Ooh. I don't, think mm, I don't know because a lot. I spoke to a lot of people about this. And they feel like that Colin Kaepernick will sell out if he doesn't take a knee. If he doesn't. But the thing is, yeah, so I feel like he kind of boxed himself into a corner because it's like you got one side of the fan base who feel like if he doesn't take a knee, he's selling out. And if he does, he's being unpatriotic. So it's like, well, man, I can't win for losing. But at the end of the day, I'm just here to play football, you know. Yeah. I mean, he oh, true, your his political belief, his political and social beliefs, or does he love the game, or you know, whatever? And like I said, you know, money, Kaepernick. I mean, even with his settlement, like Kaepernick, he's not even. It's not even really for money. I mean, I bet you, you could probably take like a one year, one million dollar contract, and you'd be satisfied with that. You can give him. You can give. Right. You can give. You can give, you can give Kaepernick the bare minimum, and I'll bet you he'll still play. But uh, all right, oh yeah, one more, and before and before we go on to the, our, our predictions, um, let's talk about uh, this. Like that, like I said, I was actually going to discuss you guys with this last week, but you know, technical difficulties and everything. But to me, the game of the week for the week before was the uh, 49ers and um, Seahawks game, where the Niners got handed the first loss. But see, here's the thing. Now, was I don't I was thinking about this. I was trying to go back and forth with this. I don't think that. I mean, the thing is, does this hurt or de did that loss hurt or demoralize them? I say yes and no, because really, that loss is really nothing to be ashamed of, especially when you get taken into overtime and that's only their first loss and it's a division of opponent. No, that's a loss. That's loss really nothing to be ashamed of. But uh, what, what are your thoughts on that, Wallace? Uh, I think it was, it was a little slightly demoralizing because – I don't think so, uh, but yeah. We had a chance. We, we had it. We, it just it kind of exposed. Uh, Jimmy G a bit. Um, the Niners, uh, our run game wasn't that as effective, and we kind of we definitely relied on Jimmy G, and he was kind of a little bit exposed in that game. But the, the defense Niners, held. The de the Forty Niners defense held though, for the most part. Intercept. They forced. They forced three turnovers. It was three turnovers they forced, right? They, well, 
Yeah, I mean, the defense was, was doing their part. I mean, the, the, the Seahawks really only took advantage of, off, of, off of our turnovers. The defense really wasn't really responsible for, mm-hmm. for giving up the points as well as, was the, uh, as our offense giving up the ball mm-hmm. um, and putting putting Seattle in, in a good position. Um, and he gave you on finally just falling through the yeah. offensive line. But, um, yeah, it was, still, it was still a little demoralizing because it's, it's Seattle and it's, and it's at it's, in, it's at home. It's, it's in our, it's on our turf. That all it is, because like obviously we're neck and neck with them. Yeah. Uh, essentially for that, for that, not only that number one seed, but that. But yeah, that, uh, that divisional spot. That yeah. Title. Yeah. So it was a little bit demoralizing, especially when you had an opportunity. You had an opportunity to 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 essentially go for the win um, early on towards the end of regulation, but they they, they kind of didn't trust Jimmy G on third down. They they, they opted to just kind of. Get in position to kick the, the tying field goal at the end of regulation, and then mm-hmm. and then you know missing, the missing that kick, just the way that kick is at the very in overtime, which is egregious. But um, it would have been a demoralizing loss for Seattle, if, obviously, if they would have scored off of that pick, because it looked like Seattle was about to score a touchdown there. Yeah. Um, so it was. Yeah, I see your point. Yes and no. It, it was. It was kind of. Uh, both ways, I could definitely, I could definitely see that, but uh, since I'm uh, biased, I'm going to say it's a little more demoralizing. But I'm glad we rebounded. If we would have lost to Arizona, it definitely would have been a hell of a two-week situation after, you know, being undefeated through the two straight. Uh, would have been a very tough, tough, tough spot, especially for, you know, looking at this team and, and some of our weaknesses. And, but uh, I'm glad, fortunately, they got the win against Arizona. But then, obviously, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a very interesting game uh, Sunday night. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, gentlemen, um, like I said, we're at week twelve. The, the season is already three fourths of the way over. Man. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, and like now with the, the next five games coming up from week twelve to seventeen, like I said, this is kind of where every single game is crucial. Every single down is important and every single game is dangerous. I mean, because like that one game really can't, t- especially these divisional games, because that really can't turn the whole thing around. Uh, because like we've seen teams who had, uh, you know, we've seen teams who were like, I don't know, six and three, just just completely just lose out and miss the, and miss the playoffs. We've seen it, we've seen it happen. And then there's teams who like literally sneak out of nowhere Get that 56 seed and then try to make that playoff push end up in the AFC Championship, AFC NFC Championship. We've seen it happen. So it's not unusual for something like that to go on. But, uh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you would think that, but I mean, I, the thing is, the AFC might just be a little bit more clear cut. Minus the, the the wild card spots, minus that, and the NFC. Oh man, I mean, I think the NFC is pretty clear. boys um now for our predictions for this week um thursday night football in afc south matchup you got the indianapolis colts going up against the houston texans now the houston texans just got completely embarrassed by the ravens in a game that i expected it to be close i actually expected houston to pull away with that one i mean just at the last minute but god lord I mean, minus that one BS pass in a fair call, but whatever. I mean, you know, the, the score was so far, that, that it kind of made that irrelevant, but whatever. Um, I feel like with Houston dropping two of their last three, I kind of feel like that they need they do need this game a little bit more. But thing is, the South, I mean, yeah, the AFC South, it really is up in the air right now. I mean, well, the, uh, the Colts and the Texans, they are neck and neck. 
And it, this one, I mean, I, this this game I might actually really be for all the marbles in the AFC South. And I think it I, is Jacoby Brissett, is Jacoby Brissett clear for um for this game, or is he still out? Mm, yeah. Um, I think th this this one to me might not be that high scoring because it's a divisional matchup, but uh. We'll see, and like I said, I think I think that Houston they might have a little more to prove because they just had a humiliating loss. It's going to be a close one, but go ahead and give me the Texans twenty four to twenty one over the Colts. Uh, Wise, who you got? Texas Colts. Uh, Same score. All right, uh, Flip, who you got? Uh, Colts, Texans. Next up, oh man, this is a potential game of the week. The Seattle Seahawks going on the road to face Philly. Oh man. Whew. Uh, fellas, this one, I don't know because, I mean, the Seahawks are looking pretty bad. They're 8-2 right now. So a loss wouldn't kill them, but the way Philly lost last week to, to, um, to the Patriots, I think they might be coming out there with a chip on their shoulder too. Especially since Nelson Ag Nelson, oh my God, Nelson Aguilar dropped the damn game with a touchdown. Why? That was, that was a tough catch. That was a tough catch. I mean, it was it wasn't even a wasn't a contested. I don't even think it was a contested catch. It was, I think he might have just overthrew him by like an inch and a half. That was a catchable ball. It's not like he's in the. It's not like two defenders are in his face and he has to jump to make a catch. No, that that was a half a contested catch. Like I said, it might have been slightly overthrown, but you got to catch that. I don't care. But um, Seahawks, they're looking pretty damn good right now. Um, like I said, Philly, like I said, with the way they lost, they might come out there trying to play with a chip on their shoulder. But um, I don't. I mean, with the Seahawks team this hot, especially on the offensive side of the ball, I don't think that Philly's defense is going to be enough to stand up to it. So going ahead and give me the Seahawks in this game, 28, 28 to 20 over Philly. Uh, but why is who you got? Seahawks, uh, Eagles. I like I like the uh, the Eagles in this game a little bit. Um, I I like the way they they played against the uh, the Patriots. Um, you know, I uh, think the Seahawks, although they've been playing you know pretty lights out on the road, um, I think still is going to be a little bit more of a different animal form. I think that'll be the toughest spot they've had to go at on the road right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I think obviously they got some. I'm not sure if they got some injuries uh, with Clowney and Lockett, so I'm not sure if, uh, if they're going to be at full strength. But, you know, they still, they still have their, obviously, the, uh, the MVP, one of the you know, MVP uh, candidates in there, obviously, the name of Lamar, kind of a top-up. 
Yeah. Um, you know, then I, you know, I, I actually now that I kind of think about it, now that I kind of like sit on and think of it, uh, I think the injuries on the Eagles is actually, uh, the Eagles actually got a lot more injuries than I did. I initially thought they're even they're even more banged up than the Seahawks. So I'm actually gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna change my pick this big way here. I think the Seahawks, um, although I think their record is a lot better than the team might be uh, on paper and how they've been performing. Mm-hmm. I, I think they're I think they're healthy enough at least uh, compared to the Eagles to to sneak away a win in this game. Um, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be below score. I don't think it's gonna be that great. Um, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and say we have to win this game 17. Mm, all right. Uh, Flip, what you got? Uh, Seahawks, Eagles. Um, I got a tough lead when we go to Seahawks here. Uh, as much as I like the Eagles, uh, I just don't think this is the same team that they pulled when they're running. Uh, Carson Owens is a He's a poor quarterback. So I just uh, I don't know if he's, he's able to kind of win for them in crunch time and against the Seahawks team, he's probably going to even come down to the wire and Seahawks are going to pull away with it. So, I got the Seahawks kind of pulling away with it and the Eagles trying to make a, a late comeback uh, which they tell that uh, Doug Peterson's coaching person, which is terrible, is probably going to be the deciding thing in this. So I'm gonna kind of lean towards the Seahawks to win this like 28. All right. Next up, uh, we got a tank bowl. Um, the Detroit Lions versus the Washington Redskins. I'm disappointed in the Redskins. I said the Redskins are gonna be eight and eight in the beginning of the season. What the hell was I thinking? And Detroit, Detroit kind of disappoints me because I expected better from them. And the thing is, when Lose or draw, Detroit always fights. They fight every single time. I don't think they've ever, I don't think they've been blown out this season in any of their losses. But yeah, I mean that doesn't matter. But um, Dwayne Haskins, Dwayne Haskins, I mean he's got some potential, but he needs to find himself. And like I said, Detroit, they're down to the second string. The only thing that's really keeping them in there is their wide receivers in the running game. So that's pretty much it. But uh, in this game, since like I said, Washington is pretty much tanking. So go on ahead and give me Detroit in this game, twenty-four to seventeen over the Redskins. Uh, Wallace, who you got? Redskins, Lions. Yeah, I got the Lions in this game. Um, despite their record, um, you're right. They definitely have competed and, and definitely aren't a team that's you know tanking or, or, or uh, they haven't they haven't really slacked off. Um, and the Redskins, they just they don't show signs of life for most parts of the quarter uh, of the game. So even with the backup in there, um, Detroit, um, they still have, you know, Marvin Dutcher and, and uh, Kevin Galladay, so uh, I think they got enough weapons to take on the Redskins. Um, so give me the Lions in this game. I'll see the Lions win this uh, 27 to 14. Ooh, all right. Uh, Flip, who you got? Uh, Redskins, Lions. Uh, Stafford's in this game, right? Is Stafford coming back? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, I think even without Stafford, they should be fine. Uh, Marvin Jones and probably like was that are enough to keep this on the risk and keep him. Um, Haskins, he, <laughs> man, was begging his whole line to help him out. <laughs> so, I don't know uh, if they're going to be able to help him out uh, this season, maybe next season. But uh, the rest can be completely thinking uh, they're in a race with the Bengals this season. So, I, Next up, we got the Oakland Raiders, six and four. Wow. Against the New York Jets, who are trying to, you know, have a, have some kind of a lifeline. Uh, I, I I don't want to sound like I'm hating, but the Oakland Raiders' record are better than, than they suggest they are. I think they a lot of the, they just got like the right opponents at the right time. Which I mean, hey, you know, whatever works for you. 
and all their wins have been close. So, yeah. I mean, and they currently hold the fifth seed, I think. Yeah, I think the Raiders hold the Raiders hold one. Of the, I think they hold the top wild card spot. I think they are holding the fifth seed right right about now. Um, yeah, I think they've got the fifth, and I think that um, the Steelers hold the sixth by like half a game over the um, ha- a half a game over the Titans. Mm. Mm, yeah. But uh yeah, the Jets, like I said, they're trying to hold on for dear life. They're trying to like bring a new spark back into their life. But um I mean, come on, like Sam Darnold, I mean, how much can you trust him? And, and like I said, you know, the, the Oakland, they like I said, their their record is better than the team suggests, but it seems like, you know, they they they're managing to pull out wins. So, I mean, you can't really handle those guys too much. Um I could I could actually see Oakland run probably run a score on New York too. Um, go go ahead and actually give me um give me the Raiders twenty eight to seventeen over the Jets. But uh, Wallace, who you got Raiders Jets? You know I'm actually going to give the Raiders a little more credit. Um, just looking at their schedule, you know the teams the teams that they've lost they lost to the Chiefs. Um, this was early on with the Holmes was still healthy. They lost to the Vikings. They lost to the Packers and they lost to the Texans. Um, all all, you know, all good teams, all, you know, you know, probable playoff teams. Um, they've beaten everyone else that they're supposed to be. Um, uh, in this game, I think they're definitely, they definitely outmatched the Jets um, mm-hmm. in offense and defense. Um, I think their car, Josh Jacobs, um, and uh, Darren Waller, they're, I think they're good enough uh, definitely to take this game to the woodshed. Um, I, I, I could definitely see this being a surprise kind of blowout because some of the people, you know, think the Raiders are, are you know, kind of a contending team. They still kind of have that, um, that kind of like that, that, that mix of being like a, you know, kind of a joking team because they're on hard knocks and they had to deal with that, you know, yeah. the Browns mm-hmm. But I think they'll, I think after this week, people are going to start looking at them as, you know, as a possible serious team because the team, you know, with, with Kansas City just kind of not looking great as of late, I mean, Oakland definitely still has a chance to win this division. Um, so uh, don't don't uh, don't come to flat. Uh, I'm going to say Oakland wins this game in a blowout. Uh, but the Oakland wins this 31 to 17. All right, uh, Flip, who you got? Um, rest- South Divisional matchup. We got the Carolina Panthers holding on for dear life with a five and five record against the offensive juggernaut that is known as the New Orleans Saints, that's sitting at eight and two. And this is a home game for the Saints. So we know how dangerous the Saints are at home. Now, are they dangerous? Yes. Are they unbeatable? Absolutely not. It's any given Sunday right here, especially when you got a team that's um. I mean, these are like these are two highly offensive power teams. Now, I will say that um, the Panthers might have just a little bit better defense. I mean, but I mean, look at all the weapons that the uh, the Saints have got on their side, on the offensive side of the ball. Um, also, I can see this game being a potential game of the week uh, too. Uh, do I want to go with the upset in this game? Do I want to go with the Panthers? Oh man, you know what? Uh, nah, nah. No, you know what? I'm I'm a, I'm gonna play it safe this time. I'm gonna play it safe. Go on ahead and give me the Saints. Give me the Saints 28 to 23 over the Panthers. Uh, but why is who you got? Saints, Panthers. Yeah, this is a, a divisional game. But, um, the Panthers have been looking pretty trash lately. Uh, Kyle Allen doesn't have fallen back to earth after his hot start. And um, all that talk about you know, potentially trading Cam or, or getting rid of Cam, I think that's all kind of washed away now. I think. That, I think now you definitely have to go back to Cam if he's healthy, um, you know, next season, obviously, and ready. Um, you know, Kyle, come back down to earth. 
the Saints are starting to come on and, and, and they're starting to get ready for the playoffs. Give me um, the Saints in this game. I'll say the Saints win this uh, 27, uh, Panthers 14. All right. Wise, who you got? Saints, I mean, uh, Flip, who you got? Saints, Panthers. Oh, man, it's the Saints game. Saints are just rolling. Yeah. Um, they got three, but uh, it ain't going to look like Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> yeah, even with Teddy Bridgewater. Oh, yeah, everybody's saying that Teddy Bridgewater, he's going to get paid next year because there's going to be a lot of people knocking on this door. Yeah. He showed up. I mean, I think it was the system, but still, I mean, he showed up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say Saints win this game. Um, yeah. But, yeah, uh, Drew Brees, uh, Michael Thomas. I mean, he is Michael Thomas. Alvin Kamara, yeah. Mm-hmm. Best receiver in the league this year in Michael Thomas. Uh, Alvin Kamara is back in form. They got their Mark Ingram and like David Murray. Uh, they still like that game out there with like 230. Yeah. Um, it, it's just the uh, team is rolling. And this Panthers team, we've seen their kryptonite is clearly just uh, stopping Christian McCaffrey and making Kyle Atlin a play quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, so at this point, uh, the Panthers. They're just, they're very beatable, and I think the same team uh, knows how to beat them. So, uh, give me the same win in uh, 34 to 21. All right. Next up, we got the 2-8 and eight Dolphins. Why they're, sign- why they're trying to win now, I don't know, instead of tanking. And against the uh, Cleveland Browns, who are at home again this week, um, after that debacle. <laughs> They're missing their best D. They're missing uh, Miles Garrett for which for reasons which we already discussed. Baker, I, I don't like. I don't really know, like, because because Baker, he's an average slash above average quarterback with really freaking good weapons. But I don't know. He just spends way too much time in the pocket. I mean, you know, he he's he's very very sack prone. I don't care how good your oh I don't care I don't care how good your O line is. If you sit back there in the pack pocket like a statue, you won't get hit. Now the Dolphins, they don't really have anybody. I mean, they don't have anybody worth mentioning besides just a little bit of a running game. That's pretty much the only thing that keeps them alive. And other teams' mistakes. That's pretty, that's pretty much it. You know, if, if you can if you can count on them to make a mistake, count on another team to make a mistake, you know, if that's your claim to fame, if that's your way of winning, then keep dreaming. Even if it is against a team like the Browns who are just fighting for a playoff spot right now. But um Going ahead and give me the Browns this game, twenty-one to ten over the Dolphins. Uh, Wallace, who you got? Browns, Dolphins. The Browns have won this pretty handily, even without Miles Garrett. Um, the defense is still pretty sound, um, mm-hmm. and obviously their their weapons their weapons trump uh, the weapons of Dolphins. Although Devontae Parker has been starting to show up, and and then Ryan Fitzpatrick is clicking as of late. Uh, but I think uh, you know. Despite all of the drama around last week and Thursday night, um, I think the Browns will still, you know, are still going to come away uh, with a victory um, in this game. Um, and it's very, very interesting situation because uh, the Browns, despite how dysfunctional they might be, mm-hmm. um, you really can't cross them off just yet out of the playoffs, just out of the playoff picture, because uh, they got the Dolphins this week, then it's the Steelers, and then it's the Bengals. And then it's the Cardinals. Uh, so things are still, it's not the Bengals twice. It, this game can still be, this, this can still be a 9 and 7, 10 and 15. Um, so even with all of the dysfunction, this team is still kind of lingering. So um, keep an eye out if they actually start getting their stuff together. Mm-hmm. Um, but even, even, you know, even with that, the coach yeah, not being great, Freddie Kitchen, um, I still think. Uh, they're good enough to get this win against the Dolphins, and then we'll see what's going to happen going forward. Hopefully, this will kind of be like a scrimmage game for them, um, possibly just to kind of get things that you can fine tune and everything. So, um, we'll see. But yeah, give me the Browns in this game. I'll see the Browns win this uh, 24, 24 to 10. All right. Um, Flip, who you got? Browns, Dolphins. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Dolphins, uh, uh, they're, they're just not it. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, the fast kid on the bus anymore. Um, I mean, that team is just, it's just terrible. They're, they're clearly thinking. Um, 
I don't know how to coach, so I was telling you either, but uh, yeah. Um, Baker, you know, he should have a field day with this team. We saw Lamar Jackson this team. Oh, God. He's yeah. Not, he's not even that accurate of a quarterback yet. I mean, his, we've seen Lamar Jackson throw. They're kind of still, uh, still in need of a little bit of tuning. So if Baker can't throw on this team, I don't know what's going to happen. I expect uh, Odell should have at least 150 yards this evening. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, just uh, give me the Browns here. Uh, 27 to 13. All right. Next up, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers on the road against the Cincinnati Bengals. They're tanking. So, and like I said, this is my worst fear right now. I mean, like I said, we're missing James Conner, Juju Smith-Schuster, and uh, Deontay Johnson. And like I said, Mason Rudolph looked terrible in that game against the Browns last week. Um, like I said, I don't even think the Cincy's goal is going to be to win. Their goal is just going to be to try to cripple Pittsburgh. And that's going to be dangerous. For, that's probably going to be more dangerous than losing. Um, like, I mean, come on. Like, at this point, since he doesn't – they're not really – they don't really have anything, no real weapons. They don't, I mean, the coaching is terrible. It's down to the second – the second string is starting, and he's not even looking good. It's like, well, what can they do? And it's like this, this game is going to see – this game really is going to tell us a lot. And like I said, the Steelers, the Steelers right now, they're sitting literally right at 500. If they want to have a shot at the playoffs, they got to win out. I mean, and this game, it might just get them right back on track. Especially since their next three out of four games are pretty winnable. But go on ahead and give me the Steelers in this game. Give me the Steelers 20, 20 to 14. 20 to 14 over Cincy. Um, Wise, who you got? Steelers, uh, Bengals. It might surprise me. I wouldn't be surprised if the Bengals maybe give them a little bit of a run. Um, despite if the Bengals kind of have a nice, decent enough cushion for that number one draft pick right now, mm-hmm. um, I think that if the, even, even with the Redskins still just having one loss, I think the Redskins can still maybe take another game or two. But um, I think the Bengals are just. Um, I think that they are. Um, they are coasting it up to where they can actually sneak out a win against the division opponent. But I don't think it'll be in this game. Um, this is this is going to be kind of a sad excuse for a game. Um, Red man, I won't be. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't take. I would. I wouldn't think any less of you if you decided not to watch this game, even though it's game just because uh, the just because of the lack of talent <laughs> going to be out there. At least offensively for both teams. Um, in the defense, so it's you know, uh, pretty solid. So I'll give the uh, Steelers Jets game. Uh, I think it'll probably be a low scoring AFC North matchup game. Mm-hmm. Probably, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 17, 17 to 10. 17 to 10. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, Flip, who you got? Steelers, Bengals. Next up, we got another tank bowl. Um, you got the New York Giants two and eight going up against um, the four and six Chicago Bears. The Bears are at home. Uh, Mitchell Trash Biscuit is not it. I'm sorry, that guy is such a choker. The thing is, that he looks good in the first half, but yet in the second half he just completely just pisses the bed. And I'm disappointed in Chicago's defense because I thought they'd be doing a hell of a lot better, but they've been keeping the games more so than Mitch. Uh, the New York Giants. Um, Man, uh, I think that Daniel Jones has potential. He could. I, I think. I think that this year it just might be a bad. Year. Since the thing is, he's been. He kind of was just thrown into the fray instead of just him. To, instead of just them deciding the beginning of the year, okay, you're gonna be a starter quarterback. You're gonna be a starter quarterback over Eli. Um, and not to mention, um, with the uh, with Saquon being injured earlier and then him coming back in the middle of the season, you know that kind of didn't help them either. Um. They they still got a couple of pieces and a couple of weapons. Um man. 
just based off of uh, the performance last week, like I said, you know, Chicago, they can't hold on to a lead worth a damn. And that's one of the reasons why they lose. But go on ahead and give me the Giants in this game over the, uh, the Bears. Give me the Giants 21-17 to 17 over the Bears. Uh, Watch well, who you got, Giants-Bears. <clears throat> Denver Broncos going on the road against the Buffalo Bills. The Bills defense is back in this game. And the Bills defense, that is kind of what's saving it. Well, that and the running game. The running game is pretty damn good, too. They have probably one of the most underrated running games in the in the entire league right now. It's, I mean, at least in the AFC. Uh, Denver, Denver, they've won three games. To me, their record should be like five and five, really. But, I mean, they they pulled some miraculous wins out of their ass during this season. They've kind of, like I said, they've dropped two or three games they probably shouldn't drop or whatever. But Buffalo, they're probably one of the most underrated teams in the AFC right now. The thing, don't ask me, I mean, if they were to make the playoffs right now, don't ask me if they go anywhere past the first round. But, I mean, we'll see. I mean, it would depend. Um, with this being a home game for the Bills, go on ahead and give me the Bills in this game. Give me the Bills 24 to 24 to 17 over Denver. Uh, Wise, who you got? Bills, uh, Bills, Broncos. Yeah, the Broncos. Uh, the Broncos are definitely a team that could be playing spoiler to a lot of potential playoff uh, and playoff seeding in the uh, in the AFC. Mm -hmm. uh, they definitely had the uh, the Vikings number uh, almost, and uh, they, they kind of blew it. Um, these teams are both very, uh, very kind of set up very similar. Uh, both good defenses. Um, um, quarterback, um, obviously, edge to Buffalo. Uh, but I think that the, the pieces that are um, on the, the Bills, they kind of, they kind of marry each other. It's just they seem like the, the Denver kind of, kind of had bad luck in a lot of their games. Then we've had a lot of close losses. So, mm -hmm. um, meanwhile, Buffalo seems to, seems to win those games. So. Um, I just look at, you know, I, I, even though I like the receiving core a little bit more on the Broncos side, I, I just, um, I, I like the other, I like Josh Allen more than Brendan Allen. Um, and, uh, I think the Bills at home, um, as, as this, uh, as this winter starts rolling down, I'm not sure what the weather's going to be like. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, even though Broncos obviously have built for that as well, but I, I think the Bills at home, I'm going to give them a slight edge, uh, just to kind of keep pace, uh, and maybe put a little bit 
of a, a little bit of a scared matrix of it. Yeah. Uh, give me the Bills. I'll say the Bills win it uh, 24, 24 to 13. All right. Uh, Flip, who you got? Uh, Bills, Broncos. Uh, yeah. Uh, both their defenses are good. Uh, yeah, I, I imagine it's to the, the quarterback situation here because I feel like Josh Allen is kind of coming into his own with uh, John Brown. Um, mm-hmm. He's got Cole, or Cole Beasley's number. Yeah. Um, and I like their running back, uh, Devin Singletary. He can yeah. be a three down back for them in the future. Uh, the future season, and I feel like he's coming into his own very quickly. Uh, he had, a, I think, a hamstring injury earlier in the year, which kind of uh, hampered their team a little bit, but now that he's kind of back to full health, I think uh, they're, they're dangerous uh, in the running and passing game now. Uh, with the, the Broncos, uh, I mean, they, they're, they're playing surprisingly well. Uh, Portland Sutton and Noah Payne are kind of keeping that receiving team alive. Yeah. Um, and Philip Lindsay and Ray Screaming obviously uh, surprised everybody somehow. So uh, I think it's going to be a close game. Um, a little high scoring, probably, but uh, I'm going to edge it out to Buffalo since they're at home. Um, I'm going to say Bills win 24 to 20. All right. Next up, we got the Tampa Bay Bucks going on the road against the Atlanta Falcons. Both these teams are three and seven, but let me find out the Falcons are trying to try to come back and uh, try to have some kind of playoff life. It it basically they're gonna have to move the sun, the sky, and the moon to do it, but they they're trying to make a little playoff push. And the thing is, it is possible. I mean, we've seen crazier things. Like I said, this is an NFC South divisional matchup, and Tampa Bay their three wins have came by you know wins that. A lot of you, a lot of people would not expect them to beat. I mean, that's where their wins come from. Teams who they expected to beat, they were expected to lose to. But uh, the thing is, if you ask most people, a Tampa Bay win over Atlanta kind of wouldn't surprise anybody, right or wrong? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Um, but it, I mean, the thing is, I, I think this kind of really is about what you think is the safer pick. Uh, what um, what you want to play it safe with this one? Um, me personally, I think that the Falcons are kind of are the safer pick in this game. You know, they're at home, whatever. Now, if if even though that on, on paper, Tampa Bay does have the healthier roster, and like I said, come on, like last in the last couple of weeks, they've made all their divisional opponents fight, even the even in the loss, like. They made people fight. So you can't really take that away from them. That's why I wouldn't blame you guys if you would have picked Tampa Bay. Hell, I was close to leading to Tampa Bay myself, but I'm just picking Atlanta just because I feel safer, you know, because they're at home. But give me Atlanta in this game uh, 20, 23 to 20 over the Bucks. Uh, Wise, who you got? Bucks, Falcons. Yeah, it's interesting. The Falcons, the last couple of weeks, have definitely worked like a completely different team uh, than it had been for most of the season. Um, uh, you know, Matt Ryan's playing a little bit better, even with the absence of uh, Devontae Freeman. Uh, this team has just been uh, picking it up a bit. Um, and, uh, and the defense has been playing for his south. Um, and uh, Jameis Winston is definitely no stranger to turnovers. Um, and throwing a lot of picks. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think it's going to be a, definitely a tight game. Um, um, yeah, it's just hard. Uh, I like the Falcons the way the Falcons are trending right now. But I think that they're gonna, I think they're gonna keep keep riding that wave and playing pretty well, um, and also possibly playing spoiler. So uh, I like the Falcons in this. I think Winston's gonna turn it over too much in this game uh, to give him a chance. But I think it's gonna be uh, definitely exciting, um, at least for three quarters until the uh, Falcons kind of close them out. Uh, I'll say Falcons win this. Kind of been a little bit of a shootout. I'll say Falcons. 31, uh, Buccaneers, 1 4. All right. All right, uh, Flip, who you got? Falcons, Bucks? Um, yeah, I like the. Ever since Matt Ryan came back, I, I don't know, maybe he just needs some time off, but he, he's been getting the ball to uh, his receivers better. Um, he's playing for his job. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, and, and plus I think Devontae Freeman might be back again for this uh, week. Uh, yeah. 
so it's looking like the Falcons are going to kind of be back to where they need to be. Um, Tampa Bay, it just seems like Tampa Bay has all the weapons to, to be a playoff team, but it's just Jameis and can't be great. He's just not consistent enough. Yeah. Um, and in a division matchup, I really don't trust him. Oh, hell no. Mm-mm. I don't trust him to beat a Jameis yeah. at 400 yards. So, uh, yeah, I got to lean towards uh, Atlanta in this one. Um, I still think Tampa Bay is just going to throw up some crazy numbers like they usually do. So, I'll say Atlanta uh, 31, Tampa Bay 27. All right. Next up, we got another AFC South matchup. We got. The four and six Jags versus the five and five uh, Titans. Whoo boy! Nick Foles is back. Uh, might be too little, too late, but uh, we'll see. Um, in Tennessee, uh, with Tannehill the situation, I mean, thing is, I, I, I they really are like one of these middle of the road teams. I, like I can see them ending the season eight and eight. Like I just don't know what to make of it, especially since it is a divisional matchup. We'll see. Um, go on ahead and give me. I can't believe I'm saying this. But, yeah, go ahead and give me the Titans in this game um, over the Jags. Mm, let's just say 28 to 25. Um, Why well, is who you got? Jags, uh, Titans. Uh, yeah, I like the Titans in this game. Titans being the uh, favorite in this game. You know, kind of got their quarterback, um, you know, Tannehill. Um, and Jags, I think Foles uh, is still trying to get a little bit of the rust off. Mm-hmm. Um, that run game seems to have uh, turned out to be slowed down a little bit um, after kind of having a somewhat solid season. Um, the last few games have been slowed down a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, just the, the overall play and, and overall team just seems to just seems to rally around uh, Tannehill. But even though you know the pieces are the same as it was when uh, it was Marcus Mariota, it just seems like you know Derrick Henry. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he's, so he's so good for those random outburst games. He's rushing for like 160 plus yards, and it's just stupid. Um, so it's a uh, you know, traditional game. Always just in the close. Uh, Titans at home. I don't trust the Jags on the road. Um, I think Cole's now going to have to Cole's going to have to show out uh, for this game for the Jags to win. I think. Um, but I think this will be another game with uh, you know with. Um, with with uh, Tannehill playing pretty well and, and not turning it over. So uh, give me Titans in this game. I'll say Titans win this 23-20. All right. All right, Flip, who you got? Uh, Jags, Titans. Um, bring back Gardner Minshew, and I'll bet on the Titans or the Jags to win this game. But, yeah. Um, Net. I mean, it don't matter. So you just don't let the Colts hang 33 on you and, and convince me that you're still the same defense without Jalen Ramsey. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, uh, it's not enough, man. Uh, Nick Foles, he, he did fine. It's just uh, that defense is it's just not the same anymore. And I think uh, they're going to have to adjust to that. And uh, with this Titans team, they can explore on you and kind of hold them to a beat. Uh, their defense is not slouch either. Um, especially their run defense, they can they can hold down teams. So uh, it, it's going to be an interesting game. I just uh, I just kind of have the uh, the Titans edging this one out, probably uh, like twenty three to twenty three to twenty. All right, I can see that definitely. All right, next up, we got, oh, boy, we got the Dallas Cowboys going on the road to face the New England Patriots. Now, everybody says that the, the, the this Patriots team is not the same Patriots that we're used to. They've all been taking the close games for the most part. And the only team that really gave them a punch in the mouth was the um, was the Baltimore Ravens. And the Ravens are, they're, they really are legit this year. Um, yeah, and uh, Dallas, like I said, I don't know what to make of Dallas because we don't know what – which uh, Dak going to get. But see, here's the thing, is that the the blueprint to beating Dallas is there. 
if you stop Zeke, you force Dak to throw the ball more than he wants to, and you don't want to do that. Even though they, even though uh, Dak's got some weapons, you know, he's got Gallup, he's got um, he's got Jason Witten, he's got um, <clears throat> he's got Randall Cobb, he's got those weapons. But it's like if you force him to throw the ball too fast, like the receivers can't, you know, react that fast. Now, defensively, I would have to say that New England's defense is, is better right now, anyway. And I mean, especially um, against the Pat. But see, here's the thing: Bill Belichick, he's good at, at taking your best weapon away, and that's something Jason Garrett has not done, at least not yet. Um, but man, go on ahead and give me um, give me the Patriots in this game, um, thirty-one to twenty-four. Uh, Why is who you got? Patriots, Cowboys. Yeah, I got the. You know what? I, I this game is supposed to be a really snowy game, it's like a snowy game. Um, you know, it's gonna be really cold. Um, so I think obviously uh, it's gonna be a game where there's gonna be a lot of running involved. Um, Patriots have shown that they can get kind of cut up with, with run with the, against the run. Mm -hmm. um, their defense, their defense on the ground is not as great as their defense as their pass defense is. Um, and that kind of plays into Dallas's chance. Uh, Dallas is a, like, a really good team um, when they got when they got their rookie game going, and they don't have to depend on uh, Jack as much. Um, obviously, uh, they were able to kind of you know get out a win last week um, based on Jack's play. But I, I don't see Jack having a good game against the Patriots defense, um, especially in Gillette. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I I think Jack. And the, the, the potential of the plotter is there for Dak to, to have a big game. Um, and I think he definitely needs to. So it's definitely, it's definitely the narrative story right now. Um, meanwhile, the Patriots, I just don't feel confident in this offense. Uh, they just, you know, if, you, if the team can put up at least 20 to 23 points, I think the Patriots, I think the Patriots can struggle. Um, and Dallas, Dallas, Dallas has a somewhat you know, solid Okay, defense, but I, I, I think if there's definitely if Dallas can get to like 24 points, I think the Patriots are in big trouble here. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, you know, I think Dallas actually can win this game. I, I think they're going to. I, I think it's a wow. monster game, and it's going to uh, going to hand the Patriots their um, their second loss. Um, so give me. Give me Dallas in this game. I'm going to say Dallas wins their uh, 27, uh, Patriots 17. Oh, all right. All right, uh, Flip, who you got? Uh, Cowboys, Pats. Uh, if it is a snowy game, uh, which I'm assuming it's probably going to be, mm -hmm. uh, I think that actually benefits the Patriots more because uh, they can see in just on the run and, and force the action. Bro, um, Stephon Gilmore is still one of the best corners in the, the league this year. Mm -hmm. uh, he can he can cut fits on uh, Amari Cooper. Uh, Dak is turnover prone, um, and and him having to throw in, in bad weather conditions just doesn't seem like a, something that uh, the, the Cowboys really want to rely on. So mm -hmm. stopping the is uh, seems like the the best bet for the Patriots team. Um, the Patriots also, I mean, uh, I think this is kind of like their their uh, kind of a game that they want to play because uh, even if they want to rely on a run with Tony Michelle or uh, a Rex Burkhead, they can still uh, rely on James White in the, the, the screen passing games. Uh, Edelman is a lot. Yeah. Uh, Tom Brady's no stranger to weather games like these, so uh, they, they have a clear advantage. Um, so I just, I don't trust that too much to, to win in this game. I feel like the Patriots can easily uh, uh, maneuver a couple points ahead of uh, Cowboys early on and, and just hold on to the lead. Um, so I'm going to say that uh, the Patriots uh, they they just you know they do their maniacal thing and and, and win this game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 27 to. 27 to 20. All right. Next up, we got another potential game of the week here. Um, wow. We got the Green Bay Packers 8-2 going up against the San Francisco 49ers 9-1. Now, 
Do you guys remember the last time that these guys met up? The for, the uh, the uh, Packers they actually pulled out a surprise win over them in a close ass game. Woo. Mind you, they didn't have the the Forty Nine didn't have the exact same squad as last year, but nonetheless, still. I mean, in Green Bay, I mean, come on. In the NFC, in that conference, they're still contending no matter what. Like I say, in uh, San Francisco's one loss, that's pro- that's the, that was a divisional loss. And that loss, they didn't really have anything to be ashamed of. And I don't really think that one more loss will hurt them in the playoff picture either. However, you know, if you want to talk first-round boss spots, mm, this might be one of the ones with a potential first-round buy. Yeah. Uh, man. I mean, Aaron Rodgers versus Jimmy G. I mean, Jimmy G's got weapons, but come on. Aaron Rodgers, that dude is a freaking magician. This really isn't going to be that much of a defensive game. I wouldn't be surprised if this one went into overtime just like the Seahawks, uh, just like the Seahawks uh, Niners game. I went. I actually lost sleep over this pick. But <laughs> the thing is, you can't really see. I mean, I, there's not really a clear underdog in this game. Hold on, wait a minute. Let me check the over-under for this. Let me see who's the favorite, who's the underdog. Two and a half points, yep. Three. Yeah, two and a half point, two point five points, three points is what they're favored by. Uh, yeah, but man, I I'm actually gonna go with the underdog. I'm gonna give me the Packers in this game, 27-24 over the Niners. It's gonna be another one of those overtime games, just like the Seahawks. Uh, but uh, Wallace, who you got? Niners, Packers. Yeah, I'm a little worried about this game just because of all the the injuries still that the Niners are dealing with. Mm-hmm. Um, knock you down from first to fifth seed in the uh, in the NFC um playoff picture. That could be that's dangerous. How that's, how, that's how crazy the NFC is. Yeah. It's going to be a close one, definitely. So you're right at that out. Uh, but uh, Flip, who you got? Packers, Niners.
mm-hmm. and we saw what his uh, his uh, brother Joey did to that Packers O line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if Nick is as as Joey is to do that. No. What are you talking about? They might. They, they, they probably is better than Joey. Yeah. No, no, no. Joey has like a crazy uh, rookie year, so Nick's not there just yet. Nick was the defensive rookie of the year. Yeah. But Joey was defensive rookie of the year. He might. He might damn near the defensive rookie and defensive player. I think oh, yeah, Joey didn't even play his full rookie season, right? Yeah, he didn't. Yeah. yeah, the man was a beast. I don't know. I don't know if Nick is there yet, man. I'm just saying. Joe, Joey's got a, a sack and a half on him right now. The sack and I'm looking at the He's got a sack and a half on him right now. And he's got um, 18 more tackles, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at the numbers. But there's a, there's a Joe, Joey needs. Joey doesn't have a pick on his on his resume though, right? No, he doesn't have a pick on his resume. Lucky pick. Lucky pick. But Joey needs to be careful. Like I was saying, uh, I think uh, if Nick Bosa can can pressure that O line like uh, like the Chargers did, which I, I'm highly sure they can, um, and I think that they're gonna look at that tape a lot. Uh, I think the 49ers uh, should have this game pretty easy. Um, One well, uh, easily though. Yeah, easily. That's a that's a risky. They have the they have the secondary to hold off on that uh that, that offense um pressuring uh Aaron Rodgers uh and their their D line is no no slouch at all. Uh the Forty Nineers D line can definitely get Aaron Rodgers and Cobb's fit. And uh, we saw what happened when uh he he couldn't uh fucking throw the ball against the, the Chargers. They went down real quick. So. And Jimmy G, I mean, if he can if he can just not turn the ball over, um, I think they'll be fine. I, I don't think they'll turn the ball over that much. I think they'll run the ball a lot uh, this game because uh, of injury to Kittle and, and Evo Samuel and Emmanuel Sanders. Mm-hmm. Um, so we might not see Aaron Rodgers uh, throwing the ball a lot this game. We might just see the usual Aaron Rodgers uh, camera pan over to the sideline, see him uh, moving and sad because the team is losing and can't get the ball. Um, so give me the 49ers winning this uh, 27 to 17. All right. Like I said, to, it me, that's kind of a ballsy pick, but I mean, hey, like I said, you know, at this point in the season, you never really do know. But we'll see. I mean, we thought. I mean, you guys thought that the the, uh, the Packers were going to whoop the Chargers. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Mhm. Yeah. But I mean, sometimes it's a matter of a team having an off day as opposed to other team being better than them. But then again, a win is a win. I'm not gonna hate. And last but not least, oh man, we got another game of the week potential right here. You got the uh, the uh, L. A. Rams going up against the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens are on a tear right now. They're clicking on all cylinders. And Lamar Jackson, he's a world beater right now, man. I can't even hate on that. And I'm a Steelers fan. I can't stand the Ravens. But I like me some Lamar Jackson. I just, he's just he's, he's, he's fun to watch. I'm going to go ahead and say that. And not to mention, like, he's not a one-trick pony either. He's got some weapons to throw to. He's actually versatile. There, he's more to, there more, there's more to meet the eye than just him being just a, uh, a dual-threat quarterback. And the, uh, the defense is pretty good for the Ravens, too. You can't really knock that either. The Rams, however, the Rams are, are slowly starting to, you know, they're starting to get the ball rolling, especially um, on the defensive side of the ball themselves. You're sure they dropped a couple of games, but, I mean, they're still in it. Hell, they, I, I still probably see them getting that 50 60 wild card spot, you know, probably just, I mean, tripping up. Hell, I mean, it's, po- it's, it's possible for them to win out, too. Possible, yes, but is it likely? I'm not sure. Um, this is hard. Um, because so far, I don't think that they, because, let's see, I, I think they, let's see, I don't really think that they can beat, well, it's, it's going to be tough. Oh, man. I'm going to go with the underdogs, man. Go ahead and give me the Rams in this game, because this is a home game. Give me the Rams, um, 28. 27 over the Ravens. Uh, flip, uh, why? So you got? Uh, I got the I got the Ravens this game, man. The Rams. I'm 
not sure if the Rams are are the Rams are borderline are borderline good to me. Jared Goff has not looked good in forever. Um, uh, you know, meanwhile, like you know, you're looking at the other looking at the other possible MVP right now. Yeah. Uh, who's been shredding, shredding team, and um, I think obviously the way this uh, this runoff is set up. I mean, the Niners ran. You know, the Niners ran all over all over the Rams. I think the Ravens would be the exact same thing. And their quarterback's even more dynamic. So it's just, I just don't think the Rams are going to be able to hold a candle to the Ravens in this game. Mm, um, even the defense? Have, even the Rams' defense? The Rams, yeah. <laughs> that, Rams, that Rams defense, I mean, they've looked, they've been some suspects. They, they, you know, they, they've been suspects this season. This Rams defense hasn't been as good on paper, you know. Um, they just have it. Now the grand kids they they looked good the last three three weeks. I mean, the last three to four weeks. Yeah. You know, they Minus the loss to Pittsburgh. Yeah. Minus the Pittsburgh loss, but yeah. Yeah, I mean but still defensively, but still, you know, it's just very, very suspect. And I this Baltimore offense, uh, they really haven't they haven't uh save for maybe the Browns game, this Baltimore offense just looked pretty Pretty solid and consistent. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say this game is gonna continue to roll. Um, so give me the Ravens in this game. I'm gonna say Ravens. I'll say Ravens 20, 29. Uh, I'll say the the Rams 17. Mm, all right. Um, flip who you got? Rams Ravens. Uh, um, yeah, wasn't wasn't right. Uh, the Rams are just looking bad. Uh, Jared Goff is looking bad. This Ravens defense is actually uh, solid ever since they picked up Marcus Peters. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh yeah, Marcus Peters is probably gonna have a, a field day taking on Jared Goff this game. Probably. Um, but it's uh, the Rams. I think yeah, the Rams are still missing Brandon Cooks. They're probably gonna be uh, getting Robert Woods back maybe. Um, but even then, it's like Jared Goff has been in the swamp. And Lamar Jackson, he's my MVP, man. And then, uh, I just I don't see how uh, any team has been able to find a way to stop him yet. Uh, I think the Chiefs just uh, outdueled him. Yeah. Um, the Browns game just seems like a weird game uh, that they just uh, threw away somehow. Um, but. They found their formula, man. They they started letting Lamar actually run the ball and started just having him sit in that pocket and throw. Uh, they just said, let loose, man, get out there and do your thing. And uh, he he's just been killing it. Um, and these these back to back games where he just had these like crazy runs, like yeah. it seemed like the same run too. It's yeah, kind of it's like a it's like a, a cheat code. Yeah, that same exact run, like he was like. Oh, man. I thought he was going to score a touchdown when uh, 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 he broke the uh, old boy's ankle, literally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was nasty. But, um, but yeah, man, uh, no team has found a way to stop Lamar Jackson yet. I don't think there is a way to stop Lamar Jackson. Uh, well, the Steelers got close. The Steelers did get close and then lost to them. Yeah. But look at who we got. We got freaking T.J. White, Bud Dupree, Devin Bush. Our front line is um, amazing. It, it's going to take an amazing front line to stop Lamar Jackson. And, uh, I mean, they said, you know, you can go head to tail running where you're at. Okay, the thing with that is I think that was before they finally let Lamar Jackson. Uh, it, it, it's like uh, I think they were being cautious with him in the beginning. They wanted to see if he could just become like a pocket passer. Who could break out and, and run, and then they finally just said, Screw it, we're going to stop playing uh, uh, safe with you and just let you out there and, and do your thing. And it's been, yeah, it's been working. Yeah. And, and he's just been killing it. And I think uh, it's just uh, it's just something that's unstoppable for, for now. Like, someone's going to eventually find a way to stop it, or Lamar Jackson is just going to finally get like that, that injury that makes him into a pocket faster. But mm, yeah. for now, I just, yeah, he's just going to run over King. And uh, the Rams, is, or, they're no exception to the rule. Um, so I got the Ravens winning this 27 to probably 17 over the Rams. 
Texans. But all right. Now, before we go, here's the playoff picture of how it looks in the AFC if it were to end today. You got the Patriots at first seed, Ravens at second seed, Chiefs at third seed, Colts at fourth seed, six and four. And then for the fifth and sixth seed, the wild card spots, you got the Bills and the Texans. And then the top three in the hunt spots are the Raiders at six and four, the Steelers at five and five, and the Titans at five and five. Now, the, the, the easiest schedule on paper right now is the Steelers that are still in the hunt. Now, the thing is, there's five games, now there's six games left, and if they go three and three, they, the thing is, they don't want to do any worse than, if, they, if they're three and three or worse, they're not going to make the playoffs. Now, the Raiders, they are tricky. They're kind of tricky. The thing is, it is a, I don't know if that, the thing is, they don't, want to, they don't even want to drop two games. To me, they are a team that has to win out if they do want a playoff spot. Uh, Titans, like I said, I think they're going to be right at 500, so I don't think it's going to matter if they get one or not, but we're going to see. Now, as far as the NFC uh, playoff picture, got the Niners at 9-1, first seed. Got the Packers, second seed, 8-2. The Saints, third seed, 8 and They're only a half game behind the Packers. They got the same record, they're only a half game behind. Um, you got the Cowboys at fourth seed. And then you got the Seahawks, the fifth seed, and the Vikings, the sixth seed. Now, Wise, we, we, we mentioned this earlier. The Niners can go from first to fifth with a loss. And, and, and you know, that's, that's hard because, like I said, you got, you got the Packers at eight and two. That, this game, for the, if you guys, I mean, if you guys lose to the Packers, that is going to be a crucial loss. Like I said, I don't feel like the Seahawks loss is going to be that, wasn't that crucial. But now looking at it, like I said, the Seahawks can go from fifth the second seed if y'all lose and if they win. So that that is dangerous. But, uh, yeah, what do you guys think of this playoff picture so far? Uh, I think it's pretty clear cut for the NFC. Uh, I mean, it might switch around. Yeah, it's going to switch around. Definitely going to switch around. Yeah. But the teams that are going to be in the playoffs are pretty uh, clear cut mm-hmm. uh, outside the NFC. Um, the AFC, um, I think it was like maybe – to be honest, maybe only like two teams are actually solidified in the AFC. Yeah. Um, the Patriots and the Ravens. Ravens can, yeah. The Ravens can still miraculously beat out the Chiefs in the AFC West. Uh, the Bills, uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to beat the Bills. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bills look like they're pretty in a good place. Um, yeah, but the uh, but thing is, if they if the season were to end right now, if the season were to end right now, they would have to face the Chiefs on the road, and I don't think they want to do that. No. Uh, Tyreek Hill injured. Um, oh, yeah, with Tyreek Hill injured. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but, yeah, it's extra. What's your thought on the playoff picture in the AFC and NFC right now? This is the Steelers' remaining schedule. The Browns at home, the Cardinals on the road, the Bills at home, 
the Jets on the road and the Ravens on the road? That's gonna det- that right there is my worst fear come to life. They are gonna the ra- the Ravens are gonna determine whether we go to the playoffs or not, and that's scary. Yeah, but the Ravens might already have it done. They might they might they might have their whole they might have a whole team. You can imagine like if they if their seeding is determined, then, you know, you think they think they're gonna try out Lamar out there? Like uh, you know, the risk risk with the way that with the way that style is and everything. Nah, they're they're gonna. If that's not determined by if that's not determined um, by that game, then yeah, they'll, they'll definitely play because it's definitely it's definitely a winnable game for them. Mm-hmm. But if, if it's already set in stone either way, like if they, if they can't catch New England, if New England, you know, if they somehow catch another loss for win because so they're two games back. You guys got any uh, final thoughts before we sign out tonight? Um, yeah. Uh, are the charges on by this week? I think they are. Yeah. Somebody like Tyrod Taylor, or 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 um, um, let's see who else is a free agent right now that's just still sitting on the bench. Tyrod Taylor's on our team. Oh yeah, I forgot about. I forgot he's on our team. Yeah, he's third straight. Is he second straight or third straight? You know, if if Philip decides to walk, I wouldn't be mad. Yeah, he's thirty-eight years old. He's 37, 38 years old. So yeah. Was any final thoughts before we sign up tonight? Any final thoughts? No, no final thoughts, guys. Just gonna, uh, you know, just gonna rip the Niners. It's gonna be a tough game Sunday yeah. night, but we'll see what happens. Um, I think, you know, go, going into that game, the Packers, it's gonna be a tough out, but I mean, we'll see. Good night, <laughs> and uh, good luck to everyone's team uh, next week. Um, so, uh, Chargers. Get some, get some yeah. And we'll do it so. yeah. All right, fellas. As usual, thank you guys for hosting the show with me and for everybody on Facebook watching. Thank you guys for liking the video and you know, tuning in. And me and the podcast crew will be back next week. Flip was. Thank you guys. I appreciate the show. Helps me the show. All right. Peace out, fellas. Peace.